everyone and welcome back to Art a la carte. In this episode I'm going to show you how to draw a cat kind of sleeping, napping, um, but first before I get into the drawing part I want to talk about finding and drawing from real life and the importance of finding pictures or photographs or or even being able to find real life subjects. How do you do that and why is that important? First of all why is it important? If you're wanting to draw especially like real life or realistically then you're going to need to know what the real object looks like. I love collecting different photographs that I find as much as I can, I like to use a photograph that I can get permission to use, either from the photographer themselves or if it's my friend, which I guess they'd be a photographer too, um, I'll ask them. And so this picture here is of a cat, of the cat we're going to draw today, and his name is Tulios. So my dear friend Sharon said definitely I could use his photograph and show you guys his cute picture and all that, so we're going to be drawing him today. So photographs are a great way to be able to draw from life, and you can either get them from photographs, you can go to your local library and get books on it, and of course there's the internet which has tons and tons of photographs, but make sure you surf responsibly. But if you want to take it a step further, then I challenge you to draw from real life, from something that's living and breathing in front of you. Now, obviously cats and dogs are not super hard to find, but if you're in a household like mine, which we don't have a cat or a dog at our house, um, what are some options we have? Well, obviously, if you have friends, you can go to their house and draw their pets if they think that's cool. But I had a really fun idea and decided to go to my local animal shelter and take some photos and videos and sketches of the animals there. I'm going to do this in a two-part video. So my trip to the animal shelter is actually going to be in two different parts. I'll do the dog part later, which I have a lot of footage with the dogs, and that was very fun. So we'll be definitely getting some fun action shots with dogs. But we're going to do the cats first, and they have this fun little room at my local animal shelter that you could go in and you could cuddle and sit with cats. In fact, it was so sweet that I ended up signing up to be a volunteer to go into my local animal shelter simply to snuggle and cuddle with cats. Who knew there was such a position? Like, you could actually do that as a volunteer job. Go and cuddle cats? Ah, oh, wonderful. So yeah, I'm excited to be able to go back and snuggle on some kitty cats. And I would have had more footage and photographs of them, but I got kind of overwhelmed by the immense cuteness of all the cats that I ended up snuggling, cuddling them, and forgetting to take very much photo and footage and stuff. So if you have a local animal shelter, give them a call. Ask them if you can come over and just see some of the animals and take some photos for an art study that you're doing, and chances are they might say yes. But for this drawing, we're going to be using an actual photo reference. In this cat video, I'm going to show you how to take a reference photo of maybe a pet that you really like and be able to transfer that over into a drawing that you have. He's taking a really cute little cat nap right there. And it's just a really sweet little picture and I think it'll make a really fun drawing. So I'm going to be doing this on just a piece of Bristol board paper. The first thing we're going to do is block in the shape of our cat. And we're going to do that using just basic shapes and moving really, really lightly. We're not going for any detail on this point. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put in his head here, right there, and then his shoulder coming down with his little paw, just like that. And the reason we're going to do this really lightly is because see how I'm fixing my line? I decided not to make him as big, so I'm shrinking it down just a little bit. And I can fix that line. I'm not worried about erasing these. I'm going to go through and I'm going to erase one time and get rid of all the unwanted lines. So that's why I'm drawing lightly, so that I'm not stopping and erasing, stopping and erasing. The reason I don't like to stop and erase is because a lot of times as an artist, our hand memorizes that motion of that line, and when we erase that line, our hand will just do the same thing. Even though our eye is saying, no, go this way or go that way, our hand will often take the same line. But I can see the difference in this. I can make that correct line first. But again, you're just going to want to start really, really softly. So here's his face. I'm going to put a dividing line because I don't want his head straight up and down. It's um, kind of tilted to an angle. So I'm going to do his dividing line. This is the line that goes down his forehead, across his nose, between his eyes, and then like that. And then I'm going to do a side line. This is where his eyes will be. And then right in between these points are his ears. And I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to let part of this just go off the paper. And that can be kind of fun to have that kind of technique as well. Because I want the focus to be on his sweet little face. So 
So now I'm just going to go through here and making sure that I have my lines where I want them. And a good thing to double check is your negative space. Now the difference between negative and positive space is a positive space is everything that you can touch in your drawing. So the cat itself is a positive space. The negative space is the spaces that you can't touch, would be the air and space in between things. So like in between his ears here, or this space that comes down and come right here so I can kind of see that part. Checking the dif difference there. Where lines intersect is also a good thing to check. So I see his little cheek kind of comes up here like this and comes down and his shoulder connects into that point. It doesn't come up smooth to that. Right here, this part here is the right between his eyes. So we're going to put one eye here, which I'm going to have a slant line here and then go up so his little eyes are closed. And one over here and over. And again, still drawing lightly because I might move that around a little bit. And then his little nose, which is kind of like this upside down T shape. And then coming into his little, little mouth right here. And his mouth just goes right into the pillow. And then his little bottom chin. And then he has one little paw just kind of tucked in right there. You can hardly even see it. And he's just got these great little cheeks that kind of come up on the side there. So now you want to take and look at your picture, and then look at your photograph, and then look at your picture, and then look at your photograph, and look at your picture, and just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what you're looking for is each time you look at your picture, you're looking at it one specific spot. So I'm looking at the distance between here and here. And then when I look at my photograph, I can go, oh, okay. So I need to move this just this way just a little bit. And you just want to jump your head back between those two photographs. It's really good if you can put your drawing here and your photograph just right here so you're not even having to move your head. That You can just move your eyes. Boom, 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 boom. That's really going to help you to see what you need to change or what you need to add. Um, and don't look at the whole picture between the two. Look at specific parts as well. Um, and it will help you to kind of find areas that you need to tweak a little bit. Because this is the part that you want to really make sure that you have everything down the way that you want it. His cheeks are a little bit fuller here. And then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to go over top of it. And what's going to happen is I'm going to pull up my lightest lines, but my darkest lines are going to leave a ghosting, which is kind of just the very small hint of where they were. So I have a clean picture right here. I can kind of see a little bit of lining. I can go back with my pencil and then begin to add in my detail. I can go in with colored pencils. I could go in with watercolor. If I wanted to ink it in, I could go in there and ink this in. Um, and there's just less things to distract. Whatever medium that you choose to use to create your uh, your piece, um, this is the time now you're going to want to switch focus. Before we were looking at shape and positioning, now we're going to be looking at detail and texture and things like that. And so you're going to move into this portion of it. A lot of times I get people asking me, how do I take just a simple drawing and make it into a realistic drawing? And basically my n number one suggestion is it's just time. Just time putting in to adding those details, um, going in there and just really working that drawing. Um, there are some people that can very easily take like a watercolor medium and just with a few strokes of their pen um, create something that looks amazing and realistic. That, again, that just takes practice and learning the, the medium they're using and, and uh, really just stretching yourself. Um, so if you're, you know, still trying to figure that out, the best thing I can say is just let yourself have that time to really put into that piece. So I'm going to be doing this in a color pencil because i um, kind of theming things right around color pencils because I'm doing a color pencil tutorial series um, teaching you everything that I kind of know as far as tricks and tips on using color pencils. So I said, hey, I would do this in color pencil, give you guys some more chances to see how the color pencils work and all that. So if you haven't checked out my color pencil tutorial series, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Check that out. And yeah, I have so many people that send me um, either through um, messages online, send me pictures uh, and links of their pets and um, or even in the mail have sent me pictures in the mail of their pets and really want to know how to, to draw their own pet. And that's such a wonderful, awesome thing to be able to do. And I, and I totally understand that. And I would love to be able to draw a portrait of every single person's pet. 
um, but that would take a long time and uh, so instead I'm just going to show you how you can look at your picture and hopefully be able to take that and learn from that as well. So if you have a pet that you love and you would like to do a picture of that, I challenge you to get a photograph of your pet and draw a picture of it and add some color to it. I would love to see what you come up with, so make sure to post those to my Facebook page and Instagram. Love, love, love to see them. Or you can send it to me in my P.O. box. I would love to see that. And I'll have my P.O. box information is in the description box as well. So, Well, hopefully you found this video helpful and interesting and um, all that good stuff. So now let's go over to our viewer question of the day. So this question comes from Sacha, and Sacha asks, what is the hardest thing for you to draw? So the hardest thing for me to draw um, probably would be something that has to have a straight and perfect line. Things like buildings, bridges, anything architectural is really challenging for me to do. I also find that cars and things like that are a big challenge for me. Um, anything that I think has to be in this exact specific place or it's off is really hard. Oh, not that I can't do it, it's just that it's not my favorite thing to draw. And so I don't practice it very much, so it is hard for me to do. Um, my poor dad has been asking me to do a picture of an old fishing boat for the longest time. And it is really stinking hard. I've tried several attempts at it and just have not liked where it's going. And uh, so I will end up doing it, but that's probably one of the hardest things for me to draw is something that has. Um, not organic lines. If you're drawing like a tree or something, you have complete artistic liberties to just make everything beautiful and, and it doesn't look weird. You know, if you're drawing a building and you have a line off, people are going to go say, that line looks a little off there. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably the hardest thing for me to draw is things that have straight lines. <laughs> that's why we have rulers. Thank you guys so much for drawing with me today and until next time, God bless you guys and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.